Thank you. I'm live streaming and I'm backing up, I'm doing a backup. So it's all yours. Awesome. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Malcolm Gray. I am the co-chair of the Community Development and Bronze Priorities Committee. Um, and I am also sharing the role today with my committee member, Chris, Christine, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. For those who don't know me, my name is Christine Culpepper, and I am a committee member. Awesome. So meeting starts today at 734 at May 31st, 2023. Um, before I begin, I will read our community board code of conduct. Just give me one second. So community board 11 meetings and events should be held in professional and hostile free environment. The following guidelines are applicable to members of the public, community board 11 and community board 11 staff. Any action or behavior that disrupts or interferes with community board 11 business will not be tolerated during any community board 11 meeting. It may result in the individual or individuals being asked to leave. If the action or behavior continues, this may be considered disturbing the peace and appropriate authorities may be summoned. If the meeting is, hereby remote, is, here, is held remotely, the person may be muted or expelled for the remainder. Repeated violations by the same person or group of people may result in further action by the community board. All public speakers must address the full board or the committee with their concerns. Electioneering for, for, for a position other than officer community board 11 is prohibited. Engaging in acts of violence, including threats, are grounds for immediate suspension of the right to attend meetings pending review by the Ethics and Disciplinary Committee. Res respect to equality, diversity, and privacy of all persons by respecting and walk and valuing differences of culture and opinion. Refrain from unpleasant and disparaging remarks and other actions. Abstain from all forms of harassment by actively discouraging it and disseminating false information is prohibited. With that said, I look forward to having a eventful and productive meeting with all of you. Um, so today we do have the YMCA Executive Director, Charlene Brown, attending the meeting with us um, while we are waiting for her to attend the meeting um, to sign on. We'll be uh, moving on with some rest of our business. So first, uh, we'll be reviewing the draft on our April 20, 20, 20, 2023 <laughs> meeting minutes. Um, Christy, I know you have these. Uh, I will share it here so everybody can see it. Does that, can, that, can everybody see the minutes? Yes. Awesome. Great. Um, I will make a motion to approve the minutes from April 2023. Christine, you're going to second? Hold on. I'm sorry. I'm having a little issue here with my computer. Um, can you guys hear me? Hello? Yes. I hear you. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Technical difficulties. Yes, I will second that. Okay. Awesome. Um, any uh, any opposition? Abstentions? So I guess the mean the minutes are approved unanimously. Okay, going back to the agenda. Um, as all some of you may know, for those who don't, uh Ju sorry, June eighteenth is the first annual community board eleven Juneteenth event. Um, we do have a flyer for this event, which I will share with you all today. Give me one second. Stop it and share. After the event, we will be celebrating Juneteenth. Um, we are having, you know, a lot of history, fun filled events um, where we're promoting unity. Um, there will be lots of food, music. We have face painters coming and it's fun for the entire community. And since it is also Father's Day, we are also um, presenting Father's Day awards. Uh, we do have confirmations from our recipients of these awards, um, we, which will be awarded by New York State Senator Gustavo Rivera. Um, Joe Thompson, who is one of our esteemed Community Board 11 members and new, newly retired president of the Florida Music Council, is getting a proclamated award by the State Senate. Um, we're also honoring Deputy Inspector of the Bronx 49th Precinct, uh, Gareth D. Kentish, um, Sergeant of Arms of the Bronx Community Bar 11, Oro Selkridge, and Union Member of the Local 79 Laborers, Andrew Diaz. So we hope to see everyone there. Um, the event will be from 2.30 to 6 p.m. at Brady Court. Uh, the, if 
this the flyer will be disseminated through email and also from our local uh social medias um, i'm sorry i'm sure the agenda again moving on um do we have any gallery session any issues concerns questions about anything coming up No, I don't see anybody who has their hands raised. No, no questions. Awesome. Perfect. Um, moving on to old business, uh, no motions on the floor right now. Oh, Diana does. Diana. Um, yes, I'm um, sorry. I'm outside at the park watering our roses. Um, <laughs> oh, nice. Sorry, not on camera. Um, Everyone on this meeting is invited tomorrow evening if you would like to join me at the Cuddy Lounge at around 7. Um, because the owners of the Cuddy Lounge want to talk about ways they can get involved with the community, stuff they can do during the summer. So, you know, the Cuddy Lounge is on Boston Road, a little bit south of Allerton. Right. So, 7 o'clock. Anyone uh, who's on this meeting who would like to join us. Perfect. Thank you so much, Diana. And we'll um, also be telling them about the um, Juneteenth. Because I told them a little bit about it, but to explain more to them about it. Oh, perfect. So that's 7 p.m., right? Yeah, 7 p.m. I might try to attend that. I might be a little late because um, we have the House Committee meeting at the same time. <laughs> oh, we do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But if I could break see you on the quick, calendar. Yeah. If it's a quick meeting, um, I'll, I'll yeah. try to get over there. Okay. Thank you so much, okay, Diana. Okay. I'll check on the time. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Now, I know that Team Spartans is one of our local, um, uh, I say exercise groups in the area. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves or anything? Yes. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Mike from Team Spartan Speeds. We're a fitness group based here in the Bronx at Bronx Park East. Um, I offer and provide free workouts as my team and I um, prepare for obstacle course racing. And we are available Monday through Friday from 6 to 7.30 p.m. And uh, I've been doing OCR since 2012. And with us, as we train for the full body workouts, you're welcome to jump in, walk, carry stuff anything else that comes with it. I'm also responsible for bringing the adult fitness equipment, working with community board members such as Diana Finch and Richie Torres office to Bronx Park East. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mike. I, I would love to connect with you and even have you at our Juneteenth event. So if you can, can you send us your contact information? Yes, will do. Awesome. Appreciate it. Um, anybody else have anything they'd like to say or Thank discuss? You. Diana has her hand up from before, so I don't think that's enough. Oh, yeah, that was from before. Sorry. Okay. Gary, you want to say anything? Liz, you want to say anything either? No, no one has anything to say. Nothing in the chat. I see that Miss Charlene Brown is with us right now. Hi, Miss Brown. How are you doing? Unmute yourself. <laughs> Okay, can you hear me now? We can hey, hear now, you Ms. Brown. How are you, doing? how are you doing today? It's been a while. Yes, I'm doing good and hope the same for everybody else. Yes, definitely. Well, thank you for joining us today. Um, yes. It's definitely an honor and a pleasure to have you with us. Um, I guess uh, one of the things that everybody, you know, wants to know is, you, as you are the new, uh, you know, YMCA in the area, um, definitely want to know like, some of the services that you guys offer um some of the you know the visions that you guys are bringing to the community and you know pretty much like how uh some of the services that you're bringing to the our, our youth and also the elderly and, and how can we um better partner with you to to uh, you know to for, for community development and to you know work towards you know your mission and the community board's mission okay great so um I'm the executive director at the Castle Hill YMCA, and I've been there for 13 years with the YMCA, a total of 21. 
and um, there are two new other wives in Cast um, in the Bronx, the borough, and they pretty much offer what Castle Hill offer. So my presentation I'm going to do is focusing on the Castle Hill YMCA. Is that okay? That's perfect. Okay. Uh, is it okay if I share my screen? Yes, please. I'll stop sharing the screen myself. Okay. Thank Go you. right ahead. All right. Can you see? Yes, we see it. Okay, great. All okay. right. So I put together the presentation to give you a general idea of who we are and what we do. And I will answer questions in the end. So the YMCA of Greater New York um, is an association. We consist of 25 branches. Brooklyn has eight, Manhattan five, Queens six, and Staten Island three. In the Bronx, Castle Hill has been the only Y up until two years ago. We are now joined by La Central and Northeast Y. The YMCA of Greater New York, you know, we're, we're an organization that's been around for 171 years. And the Y has always been true to being in the community and doing the things that's going to help promote and impact and change the lives of the people in the community. And we do this through our mission statement that we're here for all New Yorkers. We empower our youth. We improve their health and we strengthen in communities. Our vision is to be engaged with all New Yorkers. And we have four core values that we stand behind in every aspect of what we do. Responsibility, honesty, caring, and respect. You know, when COVID came in and we were shut down and we were forced to stop a lot of programs, we have been slowly building back up to it. And in doing this, we have been re remained committed to our communities and building on our strengths. And all our strengths are behind our youth and our health and our community. So a little bit of history about the Castle Hill YMCA. The YMCA came into the Bronx in 1888. So it's been around for a good little while. And the first one was built in 1900, 161st Street, and it was called the Bronx Union. And then later on, when they needed more room, they brought some property on Westchester Avenue, and there they built uh, a new facility. So they sold the old one, and when they built the new one, they did something that was odd for why they didn't put a gym in it or a pool in it. So it didn't really work out. So that's when they purchased where we are today on Castle Hill. It was a big camp. And every summer they had big camp programs until the facility was built and opened in 2003. And Monday will be our 20 years in that, in that building. But like I said, we have two new wives who have joined us, Northeast, which opened in 21, and La Central in 2022. So a little some facts about us um we have a board chair he's new this year pedro barry he's a bronx resident and he works for the association of energy affordability uh, we have 166 staff currently our budget is almost six million where two million comes from our operation monies and 3.3 million is government funding Every year, we're very active to raise money for the branch, which, which we call our annual campaign, and all of that money goes back into our programming for our community. We have two branch, two buildings, our main building, and then the smaller building, which we call the Munch Center, is really where the gym is. Presently, we're at 2,025 members. Pre-COVID, we're, we're close to about 39 members, 3,900 members. We have five after school programs, four day um, summer day camps, one community school, one senior center, Rose Scholars program, 27 volunteers and 16 active board members. So the Y is always talking about, you know, things that we do and uh, how we impact the community, impact the lives of others. 
And these are just some numbers that I took from 2022 to show you how we work to help our community. So uh, $16,400 was used in just allowing people to use our facility, whether it was for events, uh, personal use, group meetings, whether they were nonprofits or public um, city agencies. We also were able to increase our earnings for earning potential for our parents and our children through the government money we received. COVID did allow us to get a lot of funding that went a long way in helping the community. Uh, we have $34,500 in the value of our volunteer time, be it the board members or other volunteers. Last year, we served 10,100 people. We have 48 partnerships. Partnerships are crucial to what we do. Um, we can't do it all. So we try to always look for partners that can help and come in with the services we're not able to provide. Uh, with the annual campaign that I was talking about, that's the $99,100 we raised last year. We have helped 1,100 people learn to swim and develop water safety skills. Last year, we had 732 swim summer campers, 150 youth in the workforce development program, and 260 youth were employed by our branch. We, whether it was through our camp programming, after school, or our regular service programming. So, I had mentioned that empowering you for one of the things of our area of focus, and we do that, as I stated, through our after school programming, our, which we have five, four that are fee based, one free program, fee based program, I believe is in your community at PS 108. Um, we have a two row scholars programs. These programs are funded through a special donor and our summer camp five sites and our SYEP program. The SYE program is where we really have kids that we work with all year long and teaching them how to um, develop themselves for jobs, whether it's uh, behavior, it's stress, it's their mannerism. So when they're placed in these jobs during the summer, they come with a lot of skills and we actually go out and find sites to put them in. Furthering our empowering youth, the Rose Scholar Program, and these are pictures of kids are showing, boasting, I should say, their t-shirts. Um, we work with these kids all year long. We actually go into the school and they get three hours of classroom time for the college readiness. They go on college tours, whether it's in the Bronx in the local areas, uh, colleges throughout the city, uh, the tri-state area and HBC college. Um, we also do SAT and ACT test preparation. We teach financial literacy and we do college financing, teaching them about scholarships. We have workshops for the parents. We help them fill out their FAFSA forms. So we give them all the tools they need so when they do get in college, they can be prepared and be ready. Most of these teens are first time college goers in their family that come from a low income area. So this program is so important so that they are prepared. One thing we do when we do the college tours, we reach out to the youth that have been in the program and now in these colleges. So when they come there, they're able to give the tours and talk to them and make them feel comfortable. So we try to always still still stay connected with the teens that have graduated and moved on or are now in college. We have a Teens Leaders Club. Um, these are teens that focus on achieving their goals, clarifying their values, and they do community service. Our Teen Center, which takes place after school at our branch, um, and also on the weekend, these, this is a free program. And it's to help get them off the street and put them in a safe environment. Teens take the city. We actually teach the teens how to present themselves and they work with our 
uh, elected officials so they can advocate for their community and funding for different programs. And Saturday Night Lights, which is a big program now with DYCD, I think they do it across the borough and other places. But this is um, also a free program every Saturday night. Our, br our branch is closed to anyone else and it's just open for teens where they can come in and take part in uh, different sports recreation, as well as uh, if they're needing support and tutoring, also working with them, whether they want to do maybe a dance class, a swim lesson, but the facility is available to them. And then we do have uh, youth sports that are fee-based. And that's just dealing around teaching the fundamentals, fair play, sportsmanship. And those programs are in youth soccer, uh, taekwondo, and basketball. We used to have dance, but it's been kind of hard getting that off the ground since we've been back from COVID. Hope to continue building that up. And these are just some pictures that showing the youth doing some of the uh, sports activities as well as nutrition. We do some cooking classes with the youth so they know how to eat well and um, be on the road for safe, uh, healthy eating. Summer camp. So our summer camp this year is running from July 3rd to August 25th, hours from nine to five. We do have extended hours, eight to nine in the morning and five to six in the afternoon. Those services are at an additional fee. This um, summer camp does come with a fee. Um, the program operates on two week sessions and a parent can choose to do one session or they can do all four for the eight weeks and they can change up in what type of camp they want. We have a the traditional summer camp, kinder camp, which starts at the age for the four and five-year-olds, swim camp, teen camp, and also basketball camp. All camp is built a pretty much on a schedule where they get a lot of different activities. They have arts and crafts, sports, STEM, um, social emotional learning activities and development, uh, swimming and trips. With the swimming, every, every student that, uh, every camper does have swimming. And if they're in our pools is instructional swimming. So they're learning a skill, which is so important. And here are some of the prices for the camp. Camps, um, the prices have a member rate, if you're a member, and then there's a community rate. And those are for two weeks, those prices. We do offer financial assistance. This year alone, we have already given out $60,000 in financial aid. One thing about the why, no one is turned away for inability to pay. We do work with people that come through our doors. We want every child that wants to attend our CAP have the opportunity to do so. Um, what makes our camp special? Our staff. Our staff works with us pretty much all year long. When they transition out of after school, they come into um, summer camp. We have a lot of teens that have tenured there and been there year after year. We do a lot of training um, to make sure they're prepared and they are ready for camp. Um, Camps are built around themes and spirit, different spirit activities, and we try to make it exciting. The environment is healthy and clean. All right, after school. So after school um, offers homework help, tutoring, arts and crafts, STEM, sports, and um, theme events. We do kindergarten through fifth grade in our elementary schools. We have one middle school that we're in and that's sixth to eighth graders. These are the schools that are listed. These schools are funded through DYCD and we serve about 150 participants in each school except for uh, middle school, which is a little less, about 90, 90 participants. It becomes a little challenging sometimes to fill up the spots with middle schools, but the elementary schools those pretty go go pretty fast. The 
fee-based school that I was talking about, PS 108, it is subsidized with some discretionary funding. So we're able to cut down the price. That price for that program is 360 a month. With um, discretionary mon uh, money, we do offer the financial assistance, which we give each parent about 20% and it brings the cost about 280. We have been in that school for about 18 years with this partnership and it's working well. Unfortunately, we're not there for summer camp, but we do offer the parents to come to camp at our branch and we do give them a good rate since they're with us all year long. Aquatics. So we know that aquatic swimming is a life skill, it's a life skill that everyone should know, whether it's a child or it's adult. And it's just something that's crucial. It's something that's dear to the wise heart. And um, we do it with, I want to say, the young ones starting at six months. And it goes all the way up to our seniors. Whether it's swim lessons, we have a swim club for those parents who have kids who have gone through every phase and advanced as far as they can go with lessons, we have a swim club where they do get an opportunity to come in and swim in a club and just have some inter, um, I wanna say competition. And then we have adaptive swimming lessons. We do serve swimming lessons to the special needs population. And we do safety around water where we teach people, um, we teach our, I want to say members and anyone from the community, how to just to be safe around water, what to do if you're around water, if someone goes in, how do you protect them? How do you help them? And then we have a lifeguard training and certification course. This course here is, um, is free and it goes all year long. And after we train the uh, individual that takes the course, we do hire them. We can hire our lifeguards as young as the age of 16. And um, that number went down because of the shortage of lifeguards there has been citywide. So it's something that the Y has been doing now for two years and um, it's a good program. At the Castle Hill Y, we have, we're the only Y in New York City that has an outdoor pool. We have two outdoor pools, an indoor pool. So lifeguards are very important to us because we have to make sure all our pools have lifeguards. And um, I think we, we do pretty well at training them and then retaining them as employees. You know, swimming lessons are so important as I stated earlier, because it's, it's a life skill and it's something that is safe and it's something that I think everyone should know how to do. And we try to make programs where um, the child that's learning, the parent is also learning because we learn, notice when that relationship that builds between a parent and a child in the water also helps families outside of just being in that environment. And that we've learned that through our adaptive aquatics program. And then of course, just being in a pool and swimming it helps improve. It improves your heart, your lungs, uh, your stamina, your strength. It's really just something that's good on us for health-wise and for safety learning. So talking about improving health, another one of our focus. The, um, we have fitness classes. We have about 16 different types of fitness classes water aerobics, weight loss program, nutrition, nutrition, healthy habits, and a self-monitoring blood pressure. All of these come free with membership. And that's something I didn't talk about earlier, but membership at the Castle Hill Y, it does come with a fee. Um, adult membership is like $56 a month. A, a family membership is 70 and you have your uh, senior at $46 a month. But like I said, with your, with your uh, membership, these things that improve your health do come free with your membership. And then just to show, share some fun pictures of members engaging in some healthy activities. 
seniors. So Castle Hill YMCA, we oversee the Glebe Senior Center, which is in a NYCHA senior housing. It's located on Glebe Avenue, right off of Westchester Avenue. And we also have a big senior program at our branch. So at the Senior Center, that program is funded by the Department for the Aging. And at that center, the seniors are able to um, get nutrition lunch, arts and crafts, exercise, um, trips, workshops. We try to engage the seniors also so they come there and they're not, you know, in their rooms that are upstairs in the building because a lot of them we learn, you know, they have they're there by themselves so we tried to close that gap of the social isolation that a lot of the seniors suffer from and then at the branch a lot most of our seniors there go through the program of silver sneakers that's where their health insurance pay for them to be at the branch and they get the full service as any other member that's at the branch we don't provide meals there at the branch but we do provide the other activities The why, the why is very big at Strifton communities. It's important that we come into a community and we help uh, shape it, uh, grow it, uh, become a part of who the community is, uh, help solve and fill gaps on programs or services that may be needed. And we can't do it by ourselves. Like I said before, we have a total of like 48 active partnerships. And here, this is just a few um, New York bike, usually in the right at the beginning of summer, they come in, they donate bikes, and they also give bike lessons to the kids. Waterfront Alliance, we work with them, we do clean up around the water because we are located our whole back areas by the water. And then also we put uh, kayaks in the water and that the community do the exploring of the water in which they're in. And New York City Fair, we have a partnership with them. You know, we're not close to the Soundview or the Throsnecks, it's about a mile from each one, but they have become a partner and just at times come in and help us um, do some beautification to our property. And that's been ongoing for about five or six years. Strengthening the community is also with, important with our member engagement. We try to do the things member like what they ask for. This is just a picture of a paint and sip activity, something where we do almost every month among other activities. Um, and the gentlemen are why. This is just a group of members who have created a community within a community. They get together and they, they support each other. Most of them are retired, but they also support the branch itself. They give barbecues, they uh, they give dances, they hold workshops, they try to be very active within the branch and just supporting the things that we do. It's it's a it's amazing when you see a group of people that love where they come take the time out to form their own group and say, hey. You know, we're part of this group, but we're also a part of each other, very supportive behavior. Strengthening the community is important that we partner with our elected officials. Um, we advocate for funding in every way we can, and uh, relationship is building. And it's just a picture of myself with a couple of elected officials. Every event chance we can get, we engage um, so we can keep the funding going to offer these many services that are needed and keep them at a price that is affordable to the community, if not free. That's just more pictures of that. And community events, every opportunity we get, um, that's a going back to school backpack with every holiday we try to make fun and engaging events. And um, some of the pictures are from our big fundraisers. Um, it's important that we engage in um, getting money so we can also provide for our community. So before I finish, I do wanna tell you at the 
Castle Hill wise, some of the, our amenities we do have, we have, uh, like I stated earlier, the pool, one indoor pool, two outdoor pools. We have a big outdoor facility, which consists of a ball field, basketball courts, um, grills. We have our gymnasium. We have a fitness center with strength training. We have a sauna, a parking lot. Um, we have, uh, oh my gosh. I want, when you come there, we have a lot to offer and it's at a very good location. We're right off the sound. You can see the White Stone Bridge as well as the Thrive Neck Bridge from a beautiful view. And it's just a wonderful place to be a member of. And, um, you know, if you like to any time, just come by and see and visit. We would be more than happy to allow you to do that um, at no feed to come and visit for the day. And um, this, this is just some information on us here, our website. You could check out our Instagram, our Twitter page, um, our address. And um, yeah, that's pretty much who we are. So I would like to pause and um, answer any questions anyone may have. Ms. Brown, thank you so much for your presentation. Um, I'll open the I'll open the floor up for any questions. Christine, do you have any questions? Um, I just I think I had a couple of them um, answered already, um, but maybe you can give a little bit more detail about the financial assistance and the income based membership. Okay. How does that, yeah. Okay, so membership, like I said, membership can be paid the whole year front or monthly. Most people opt for the monthly payments. Adult membership is $46. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, $56, a senior membership, $46, and a family, $70. Those are monthly fees. Anyone and everyone can apply for financial aid. Financial aid, we used to do it based on income, but since COVID came, we stopped doing it that way. And we just, we start by giving our financial aid, usually around 20, 25%. And then if someone wants to more, but they have a special need, they come back and we work with them. Okay, so income-based membership is not a thing anymore. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you guys and, and everything that you do. I, I, I used to go to the Castle Hill Y when I, was, when I was a kid. So I appreciate all the wonderful things that you guys are still doing and the new things that you guys have, you know, um, uh, uh, added to the, you know, to the programs that you guys are doing. That's wonderful. I love to see the alliances um, that you also have made great stuff. Yes. Yes. Come visit us. You Absolutely. have been since a child. You, you're going to be amazed at what you see. <laughs> do, do you guys still have like a barbecue area or is that? Yes, gone? we do. And that's, that's really big during the summertime. We have some people who sign up just for summer membership because of the outdoor pool. And, you know, with that membership, you get a little more perks because we do outdoor movies. We make it where it's a member only experience. So we don't allow guests in. Um, we also have it where if you join during, with the summer membership, you can visit any other Y in the five boroughs. So it's, you know, we make it good where you can come and really have a good time. And that's what's really going on now, the summer memberships. But, um, you can just join as a monthly person for the year and uh, we still love to have you. That was awesome. I definitely want to come by. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We want you there. Awesome. Any, I'm open to the gallery. Any questions from the gallery? Cynthia, Diana, Elizabeth, Mike, Harry. No questions. I but I do want to thank Ms. Brown for coming and, and giving us this presentation. I've been in the area for, you know, seven years and um, I actually didn't know a whole lot about the YMCA. You hear the YMCA, you hear the song, you know, it exists, but um, you know, thank you for, for sharing all that information. You're welcome, Diana. I see that Diana has a question. Sure, yeah, thank you for the presentation. My daughter went to the Castle Hill Y during the summers for a few summers mm -hmm. um, and did a lot of swimming there. So that was great. Um, I am interested to know if you know anything about what's involved 
in opening more locations in the Bronx? Oh, okay. I'm over so near like Bronx Park East and both Castle Hill and the Dunhill one are pretty far from where we are. Mm -hmm. So as I was stating, we just opened the two, one um in 20 and the other one in 20, no, one in 21 and 22. Um, and opening a YMCA takes a lot of money. <laughs> and we were fortunate with the other two that we got a lot of funding from um, uh, Carl Hasty and other elected officials. And then it takes a lot of private money and it takes a while to get money. And we do have association office that has um, a property and real estate department that looks into these. So Diana, what I can do, I can find out if there's anything out there that they're looking into for other areas in the Bronx. I'll be more than happy to share that with you. Thanks, and that would be great. And I guess yeah. you either do build new buildings or you adapt existing buildings. It could go either way, right? It could go either way. The last few that they built have been new buildings. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Diana, <laughs> if, if Malcolm, you can share Diana information, I will follow up with her when I get an answer. I'll definitely do that, Ms. Brown. And thank you so much for the question, Diana. Um, I do have a question. I know PS108 is within our district lines. Um, and I know that they are fee-based and they're subsidized. Um, can you, can you tell us more as to, you know, like the Roman process for that, you know, what are the deadlines, you know, when do you start accepting, um, you know, with students? So we start the hire, not the hiring, I'm sorry. We start enrolling the kids for after school. I want to say about mid August, they can go to the school and they can sign up there. We start at that point because we try to have after school open on the 1st day of school. So that's why the process starts early. Um, they have all the information. We're a big partner of theirs. And um, you can also um, ask for financial aid application if the fee is too much. There is a discount if someone was to pay for the entire year up front. I think there's like a $600 savings. But most people opt for the monthly fee. I, I'm sure that's more manageable. You know, and, and when I was uh, preparing for this and I was looking and I says, okay, if you break down the fee you pay for camp on a, to a daily basis, it comes to like $14 a day, you know? So uh, it seems like a lot, but uh, it, it's worth it when you want your kid in a safe environment. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And um, I know you enroll right now at about 90 students. I do you have like, are there any plans to expand the program past that? So the biggest barrier for that has been in the last uh, two years is making sure we have enough staff, staffing. Okay. Uh, staffing is a challenge all around. Young people don't want to work today, you know, <laughs> or people, or they come in, they start, they leave. So right. there is a ratio and staffing is what really, you know, holds us back some time from getting more students in is because we don't have the staffing. So we're actively starting looking for staffing. We try to retain the ones we have for our camp. The, um, half of those go back to school because there's a lot of you know college students. But if we can get staffing, we are licensed to do 120 kids in that school. Okay, perfect. Like, do you also have a flyer for like those those students that you're looking to? to Absolutely, um... and I will share that with you. It'll just make me a Thank little you. note here. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Yeah. And um, another question that I had, mm -hmm. um, I know that a, a lot of services that you offer, like the I'm sorry, I wrote them down here. I mm -hmm. just teens, <laughs> like the uh, the financial literacy, the teens take their city. Saturday Night mm -hmm. Lights, even the tours from a lot of your alumni, I think those are perfect, especially for, for youth and, you know, students that are coming up. Um, do I, but I know that those all take place at your facility over in Castle Hill. So, like, do you, like, have a busing program that you usually take from kids from here to there? 
or it, do they no. travel themselves? No. Okay. So yeah, no. The Y has no busing program. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Most oh, I want not even most. Our t all our team programs are free. You know, that's the age that we want to be there for them and meet them where they are. So right. you know, if they're interested in being a part of us, the team can come to the Y. You know, and sign up for different array of programs. Perfect. And can you tell us a little bit more about the Rose Scholar program? and how you bring the sub students into that? Yes, so the Rose Scholar Program, we do it within two schools. One is um, Exploration Academy, and the other one is Antonio Parara's uh, Academic School, better known as APPER. Those, those students in the school, we pick 30, 30 from each school. And we work with these kids from the time they're in ninth grade all the way up to the 12th grade. This program is funded um, by a private donor that keeps it going and it's just been very successful because these kids get a chance to do things that uh, so many of our youth don't have the opportunity to do. It is a program we would like to you know, expand and do further. It is a costly program because of the many things that they get. But uh, it, it's an important program. If you know students that's in either one of those schools, they can definitely look into being a part of that program. It's good to know. Mm -hmm. and, um, you answered the financial aid question. So I think that's all the questions that I had. Any, anybody else have any other questions in the gallery? No? I don't see oh, any. Okay. No. Awesome. All right, sounds good. Well, Ms. Brown, thank you so much for your presentation and for your wealth of knowledge. We definitely appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And if I can help you guys out at any time, feel free to call on us. We definitely will. So much. Ms. Okay. Ms. Brown, um, yes. can you share your PowerPoint with us? Oh, yes, absolutely. I'll send it over to Serena. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. All right. Have a good day. You too, Ms. Brown. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Bye bye. Thank you for having me. Well, okay. So that is our presentation. Um, going back to the agenda, I uh, believe we have just one more thing left. Um, there are no motions on the floor, and now we're moving on to old business. Um, the community board eleven dish. Sorry, the community district eleven sites request form is still pending review. Um, once we have that up, hopefully within the next few weeks, we will let everyone know um, pretty much how the review goes for us. Um, you know, for anyone who has is requesting a site visit, wants us to look at you know something that that requires a budget request, we will come out with you, take a walk, um, and assess it, and then we'll also try to bring in you know the appropriate agencies to assess with us. Um, and is I know that there are also talks for this specific site request form to also be uh, applied in other um, committees too. So once we have that um, rectified and out there, we will let everybody know. Um, moving on, um, new business. Is there any new business anybody would like to bring up at this time? I don't see anybody's hand raised. Awesome. So since there's no new business, that. Oh, hold on a second. Oh, hold Diana. On. Oh yes. Um, I just wondered um, if I could ask Elizabeth Cron to, to introduce herself and tell us a little bit about what she does, because she's a great community member, our neighbor, um, who does wonderful things with parks. So I don't know. I don't want to put her on the spot, but if she's comfortable with it, if she's, yeah. if she's comfortable, Elizabeth. You guys are funny. Yeah, you did put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth is more is also my neighbor. <laughs> wow. But everyone should know you. <laughs> so actually, I am on this meeting because I always do like to hear all the good things that you guys do. And since we are neighbors, um, you know, I like to know what's going on in the community. Maybe there are some resources that we could provide too if something comes up your way. So nice to meet you all and really enjoy listening to how you all collaborate and keep things up to date. 
Thank you so much, Elizabeth. I definitely appreciate you. I know Diana, I remember at one of our meetings you you were discussing a cleanup day over uh at Pelham Parkway, something like that, with the uh, with few groups. Uh yes. Um the idea is because there's so much focus on the Pelham Parkway pathway, the greenway, um with the parks department's plans for upgrading, renovating. Um, and we noticed that the pathway itself is very dirty and it's like covered in sand in certain areas and dirt and pine needles, which makes it very slippery too. So, do, um, do you have a date Diana for, for the, yeah, cleanup? we're thinking about, yeah. uh, the 7th, June 7th in the evening so right. that we can get a lot of the people who are just out there walking. Um, you know, we could talk to them about the parks project. We can get them to help us. Um, it, so will Elizabeth be participating in that? I don't know. Elizabeth is Mashalu. Okay. We will invite her. But the idea is to bring together all the neighborhood associations, like the Allerton Homeowners, the Pelham Parkway Neighborhood Association, Morris Park, um, St. Catherine School may join us. Um, okay. And um, if it will stretch all the way do from, you, from do you have an event solo. do you have an event flyer made up yet um we're going to use the parks template the parks has a template but we okay. just have to maybe straighten out a couple more details yeah so she can share like, it to her facebook page yeah I mean, one of the logistics that we're working on is the parks department because it's we're going to do it in the evening when they're all home um they're not at work they need to bring the equipment, the brooms and the gloves and the trash bags during the day to a central location. So we're trying to work with Marjorie Velasquez to get that to happen at St. Catharines. So then we can pick up the equipment before we go out. It will only take us maybe a, an hour or so and then bring the equipment back there and then the parks department will pick it up again the next morning. So that's the logistic thing that we're start we're trying to work out. Okay. So Great. Wednesday to 7. That's so save the date everyone. Save the date, saved. <laughs> so <laughs> if you need, if anything else you need, you know reach out to us and we'll help as much as we can. I will most likely be there. <laughs> Great. And <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we're inviting the whole community board too. Awesome. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Diana. Um, any anything else anybody would like to bring up? I don't see any hands up. Awesome. So this will conclude our meeting. Definitely appreciate you all. Um meeting is ending at 8 28 p.m. Good night to everyone and see you soon. I can't see I can't see my song. Wait, wait, Harry, you can sing your song. <laughs> Have a good night, man. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs> all right, good Bye. night. <laughs> all right, good night, night everybody. Everyone. Good night. <laughs>